So now we'd like to start the WOW panel discussion under the title of Leadership for Regional Development and Job Creation. Today, already on the stage, first of all, uh, Ms. Satsuki Katayama, Minister of State for Regional Revitalization, Regulatory Reform, Gender Equality, Women's Empowerment. And Mr. Muneharu Nagaga, Nagagai, Mayor of Toyoka. Ms. Kanako Sato, founder and CEO of Snow Days Farm Company. Uh, Ms. Alice Graham, Assistant General Counsel, Microsoft Japan. Mr. Kenji Shoji, Vice Chairperson of National Council of Commissioned Welfare Volunteers. So those are the panels, the panelists. Thank you very much for coming. The moderator will be Ms. As Asako Osaki, Visiting Professor of Kansei Gaku University, Director Gender Action Platform. So first of all, uh, from the Minister of State of Regional Revitalization, Regulatory Reform, Gender Equality, I'd like to ask Ms. Katayama for the introductory statement. First of all, WOW and W20, all of you who are here this afternoon, for this title of the Leadership or Regional Development and Job Creation. Thank you very much, so so many of you being present here for this session. This is simultaneous translation. Yes, I can continue on. Yes, please. So, in fact, I have been wearing several hats, so recently, uh, setting up the overall framework and the foreign distinguished guests who are here with us today, I have come to know that they're mostly foreign ministers. So how many of the guests that will be here was really my serious concern. But uh, looking at this great audience, uh, I think uh, my worries had gone away. So I'm very honored to be able to speak in such dis dis distinguished members. So why Japan being a host of G20, being uh, handling the women empowerment issue? Why is it so? Uh, this regional development and job creation is so important is because the SDGs goal that we're pursuing under the auspices of United Nations is exactly the same. So nobody will be left behind. In Japan, we have been taking roles and avid, of course, interest in achieving that goal. And of course, my role as being the regional revitalization, like the city of Toyooka, uh, some of the local government that has an outstanding performance in SDG has been awarded. So that in itself will lead to women's participation participation at the same time, uh, something that's relevant to job and business and career for women's vital role in the society. Otherwise, we won't be able to truly be able to promote women and have women shine in the society. So this is something that is very common to the rest of the world as well. So in terms of women's active role and development of the region, there were strong speeches uh, that has been delivered by the Prime Minister Abe. So after, after the uh, Abe administration, this is a truly new initiative. Uh, and so all the local government here in Japan uh, in creating the overall for the revitalization of city people and work is done at its utmost endeavorment. So the historical or record-breaking numbers are achieved already. So there are 47 prefectures in Japan. And all prefectures, in terms of their ratio for the effective job application, have exceeded one, meaning that the offer of the job is more than the applicants. So this is taking place, the ratio of job uh, opening to job application. So this is a situation, but still yet, the Tokyo zone within the Tokyo peripherals, still from the region there is a job opportunity, people are coming into the urban area. So there is an excessive integration of Tokyo. It has not stopped, but rather inflated. So who is coming to Tokyo, the metropolitan area, is in fact youth and women. 
So this flow and stream of migration to Tokyo, how can we change this? It's the very means of how I'm establishing several policies. Maybe the central government could be located in the suburban area. So the cultural agency could has been already decided to go to Kyoto City in 2021. And also creating a attractive regional universities measures that really have a short-term viable effect. At the same time, being able to nurture companies and enter entrepreneurs in the local area. The overall project to link the local government and also the company. The out of the 100 billion, five, six years, there will be subsidy that will be created for the collaboration between the university academia and the private company. So starting from this 1st of April, alongside with uh, this, uh, of course, initiative, there are students that are coming in to this framework. And also uh, information support and people support and also uh, financial support in revitalizing uh, the region. These three arrows have been utilized in order to promote the further revitalization of our country. And at the same time, uh, some of the activities that are, have not been undertaken by the other part of the world, but 1st of April, the Japan's New Year, that is physical year, from Tokyo to suburban area. Those people who willing, are well, willing to go outside of Japan to establish a company or maybe working for SMEs, to increase those number of people. Uh, from the subsidy for regional activity, we have new financial scheme. So at the maximum, those people for individual will be ex extended 3 million yen and we have already ad adopted uh, this measures so with the budget appropriated this money is going to be extended to those individuals moving out from Tokyo starting from April the 1st so alongside with this major trend young people especially targeting women uh, it is a must be a regional development it's where it's people find easy to work and easy to rear children uh, during the maternity leave and also the childcare, there is a so-called M-shaped curve where people would leave the working force. And this is one of the characteristics, which is rare for the developed country. But the reason the differences are there, uh, your working place, your residence, uh, your child care uh, location, if it's closer in a vicinity, people tend to continue on working. And the utilizing ICT, establishing satellite office, the so-called remote teleworking is also something that could be of a good fit or benefit or has affinity for women to keep on working by rearing their families. So overall, it's work-life balance. So work-life balance was lacking in Japan so far. So with work-life balance, the city building itself will embrace this work-life balance. And each of the regional government are striving to achieve this goal where the central government is going to extend itself. It is not still enough. So by end of May, we are going to offer a different dimensional uh, of course, strategy. It is a very strong pushing commitment from our prime ministers. And uh, we also have the chief cabinet uh, secretary here with us, but it is a plan which is very robust in its framework uh, that is established in June. It is going to be a revitalization of region which is coming from a totally different dimension. And we are extending effort day to day in, in achieving this goal. This panel today is a valuable insight that will be shared. I hope that you'll be able to get best out of this opportunity. And for Japanese women to play a vital role in Japan, people's lifespan is said to be 100 years of old. So at this range of time, Japanese women average age span is 87 years old. That's an average age span. It's running at the top uh, from the global other regions. But both those people who are born today will be welcoming a centennial anniversary uh, birthday. Excuse me. So meaning that after child rearing and 45 and above women, the remainder of the 55 years of their lifespan. They have to be a fruitful and healthy and thriving, of course, life for their own. And we, as a government, need to establish policy in order to achieve this goal. So after the family rearing, uh, the empty nesters, there needs to be a recurrent uh, education to support education and securing opportunity to take 
a place in the workplace. So maybe supporting entrepreneurs based on, on their empirical expertise. So University Acad Academy will have a special office for equal opportunity for men and women and working with the vocational recommendation office. There is going to be a support comprehensively to support women and also elderly to obtain work and live a fulfilling life. And also there may be a nurturing child rearing support and consultant nearby is also very important. So this is over 45 years old, uh, wanting to re revive in the work environment. They would have a vital role to play. It would be a good matching opportunity based on their experiences. So in order for women to be active, it is important for them to pay attention to their health. And also, they have to be free from the, the needs for the elderly care. I talked about 87 years of age as an average. In Japan, we have the gap between healthy lifespan and the lifespan in general, especially among women. There could be a gap of about the 12 years and 3 months, 87 years of age, but uh, they, they, her life would become the unhealthy at the age of 75. That means that she is not able to move around. They, that's really sad. They supported their families, they supported their community, and then they, all of a sudden she is frail. She cannot walk anymore. So it is important to make sure uh, that the, 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 this gap would be shortened as much as possible. So early diagnosis and early intervention for diseases are indispensable. The uh, breast cancer and other the, uh, the kind of diseases which are inherent in, in the women should be detected early. A screening is needed. So early the, the uh, detection and early intervention would, would hold the key for this. In Kagoshima, they have Shinkaga, and they are placing emphasis on the health checkup uh, for all the employees. But the four people contracted cancer, but they, because of the very early uh, intervention, they were able to recover. Uh, the screening rate is 42% among uh, in Japan. Uh, this is the, one of the lowest in the world. They, although Japan has the, uh, the superb the health system, which is universal health care, it is considered to be odd that people do not go to the uh, clinics. And also, they, they specified the screening process, uh, which is the uh, medical checkup. The 56% among people, among male, and the 46% for me females. This is 10% less than the, the, the uh, male per counterparty. So they are too busy and they have difficulty going to the uh, checkup place. So from now on, ICT and healthcare will be com combined so that they are able to identify the problems before they would they have the, the signs of onset. So internet driven health is important. Whatever the case, Japan is, has a large number of challenges. In that respect, we are very much advanced. We have the, the severe concentration of, the, of population in the urban areas. I'm sure other countries are also in experiencing the same thing. We have longer lifespan, and the people get older and older. And also, we see this, the shrinkage of the working population. In that situation, we have the sharp, the the the, the uh, chain, the major change in the demographic. In order to have a stability, in order to have the quality of life, it is important for Japan to tackle with this issue since we are number one in terms of number and degree of the diseases. And so uh, we have to work on health and the, also the, the community and the uh, health, the happiness. The community should be driven by the human resources and, and, and to be uh, activated. And then we will see the quality, uh, the s life science, si the healthcare services, even though we we will see the major change in demographics. I'd like to uh, work hand in hand with all of you. And also we listen to the voices from the people who are working in the, the front line in the panel discussion. We'd like to collaborate with them as, as much as possible. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Katayama. Next, we'd like to invite the uh, Professor, Os Professor Osaki, of, who will serve as a moderator. Thank you very much. I'll be serving as a moderator. My name is Asako Osaki. This the international conference. Wow, I have been the serving as a moderate the advisor from the second time, and then W20.
Indeed, I am a member of the steering committee. So the, from the W20, the, the recommendation has been submitted to Prime Minister Abe, and I have been working in the last several months for compiling these recommendations. This morning at 1 o'clock, uh, we had a discussion and the, uh, we were able to agree on the uh, the document uh, or communicate and the, successfully I was able to deliver that to Prime Minister Abe this morning. I'm very relieved for be it WOW or be it the W20 empowerment of the people in the local community is important, making sure that they are educated, they have economic, sound economic the autonomy and also they are, they, uh, they are healthy and they are able to have self-determination of their lives. This is considered empowerment and the, uh, this is a very important topic and that WOW and W20 have been working on it as an important topic. W20, for, for instance, uh, had the Argentina as the, uh, the, the country holding the presidency, especially in the local arena the, and also in the, the agricultural communities. Uh, they have been the uh, focus on the, the uh, discussion uh, the centering around the women. And also on the third WOW, we talked about innovation from the local community. We had the discussion where we tried to understand the uh, the nature or profile of the community in which people are able to shine and also patriarchy uh, had been taken up and also and, and the, the very strong stereotyping and the, another issue was the discrimination suffered by single mothers and there have been many challenges that have been voiced in that meeting and as a result we decided that it's, it is important to work on the empowerment of the female, which should be conducive to the enhancement of the community. For that purpose, gender equality in the region should be realized. This time we have uh, the Minister Katayama. She, has been, she is responsible for the, uh, she is the state minister for regional revitalization, regulatory reform, gender equality, and women's empowerment. So uh, here we are able to think about actual actions. And so today we have a great panel members shown here. So allow me to uh, ask them to, uh, to introduce themselves. The, uh, Mayor Nakagai, would you like to start? Uh, may I introduce myself? Thank you. Uh, this is a wow opportunity for the Japanese female males the uh, this is the uh, this is situation where I feel uh, rather isolated so the in the case of Jap the Tokyo the Tokyo's the fertility rate general fertility rate the, 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 it is the, uh, the 2.04 oh, 1.04 and the in the case of Toichi it is 0 0.08 so that means that if young people uh, that come to uh, would come to Toyoka then that means that we will see the increase of the number of the young children by uh, 610,000 so the uh, concentration of uh, population in only one place namely Tokyo would destroy the country so I'd like to speak about this issue in the discussion Ms. Sato thank you very much my name is Sato I'm from Tokamachi, Niigata Prefecture. It was snowing in Tokaham, Tokamachi. It's a famous for heavy snow. I am from Kagawa Prefecture, Shikoku Island. I went to, I came to Tokyo, uh, in Tokyo when I, my, at university, when I was a university student, and then I the, uh, got employed in Niigata. It's been nine years, and then the two years ago, two uh, two days ago, I had the uh, second child so uh, I am rather exhausted I might have to the, breathe heavily but I'd like to uh, speak about this issue in this discussion uh, Ms. Graham um, I'm Good afternoon I look after our corporate and uh, legal affairs for Microsoft Japan we also cover our government affairs and philanthropies as well so I'm really thrilled to be here today to share with uh, this distinguished panel and all of you here in the audience our view of how we can increase diversity in rural areas in Japan. It's a super important topic. I always like to start with, um, if I could have the first slide, our mission statement for Microsoft, just to ground everybody in the fact that it is focused on people and organizations. It's not about us, but how we can make other people better. And that really is our mission. Um, we all know um, that 
the technology in Japan and around the world is changing rapidly. And we know that um, more than half of today's jobs require digital skills. At Microsoft, we believe in a future where every person has the skills, the knowledge, and the opportunity to achieve more. And so, as we see the technology gap, gap growing around the world, and we see that um, more than half of the people left behind are women, actually. We know that. And so, with that in mind, we have created this Empowered Women Japan program. And later in the program, during the panel, I'd like to share more with you about the program. But in essence, it is the, a part between local government corporations and nonprofits, whereby we can help bring skills to women and really populations. It's not limited to women, though it is very much focused on women, um, throughout Japan. We provide reskilling opportunities, and when the uh, graduates of the program have completed the program, we partner with corporations who have agreed to give them apprenticeships or to hire them on. So it's really a win-win solution across the board. The last point I wanted to make on that is that, um, you know, at the same time we work to increase representation for women in work in Japan and to develop those technical skills, those same strategies also benefit the broader community. So people that are elderly, for example, or people that have disabil physical disabilities, participating in the program gives them also the skills to participate much more broadly in their economy and in their communities. So um, again, I think it's a win-win and a really great model for how we can improve diversity in rural areas in Japan. The last point I want to make is we do have a booth, and so I invite all of you who might be interested in learning more about it to take a look at our booth and come talk to our staff there who are very passionate and happy to share with you some details about the program. So thank you. Thank you. OK, Mr. Shoji, please. I serve as Vice Chairperson of National Council of Commissioned Welfare Volunteers. Uh, my name is Kenji Shoji. I'd like to explain about the e e system. Uh, so uh, uh, we e are commissioned uh, by a Minister of Health and Welfare, uh, and uh, they are all volunteers. And uh, based on social welfare and child uh, welfare uh, law, uh, it's a nonprofit uh, volunteer. Uh, there are more than 230,000 people working as a volunteer. Uh, they align uh, with uh, the local residents uh, and uh, try to solve uh, the issues that they face. And uh, of course, uh, whenever uh, necessary, uh, we escalate uh, to uh, uh, cities etc. Uh, so oh, social welfare has more than, um, volunteers have more than um, 90 years of uh, history and child welfare volunteers, uh, more than 75 years. And uh, this uh, is to support uh, local residents uh, so that everyone uh, can enjoy their social welfare. So as we've heard uh, from Mr. Katayama, Ms. Katayama, uh, yes, uh, we are experiencing depopulation uh, and young people are uh, going out of uh, these uh, rural cities. Uh, so very serious uh, uh, decline in population. Uh, but there are people uh, who uh, are staying uh, at a rural area, however, uh, not having a job, uh, and uh, they are um, withdrawn uh, from the society. And a system for self-support of needy person uh, kicked in from 2015. Uh, and uh, that's how we extend help. Uh, so uh, those people who are in need in their lives, uh, whenever these kind of people uh, exist uh, in the community, uh, these uh, volunteers are here to help. Thank you so much. So today we have limited time, uh, but uh, we'd like to cover three items. First uh, is about job, second is about life living, and three is about the community leadership. 
So from uh, respective fields, uh, we would like to uh, discuss these topics from multiple uh, perspectives. Uh, so let's talk about uh, employment and job, entrepreneurship, and also farming uh, is another uh, opportunity. So uh, Mayor Nakagai, I have a question to you, first of all. Uh, in city of Toyoka, uh, so at um, city assembly, and maybe corporations in Toyoka, uh, from uh, that perspective, what are some of the issues that uh, women face in terms of uh, job? Well, the gender gap uh, is uh, still a big issue. For instance, uh, at our s uh, city hall, 7.7% uh, uh, are uh, female managers. It's been uh, 10 times uh, compared to uh, 10 years ago. Uh, it has increased, uh, but it's very limited. And also at the uh, private sector, uh, we don't see many uh, female uh, executives. And uh, at uh, other community level, um, uh, we still have gender gap. And uh, what uh, we have folks focused on uh, is, of course, uh, this is directly related to return of young people. Uh, those uh, in ten, uh, teens, uh, when um, people graduate from high school, 90% leave Toyoka, and some do come back uh, in their 20s, uh, but uh, it's uh, still 60% of them coming back, which means uh, that uh, we have in negative 40%. And uh, who, Men uh, have uh, come back uh, to uh, Toyooka City uh, plus 17%. Uh, However, women uh, has uh, worsened. Uh, they have a, well, only half of um, men, that is uh, the number, uh, is coming back uh, to Toyooka City. So uh, we realized several years ago about this fact. So in order for young people to return to the city, we have been taking actions, uh, but uh, regarding female, uh, we really have to uh, carry out special uh, initiatives uh, or else uh, they will never come back. So we have a sense of urgency now. Uh, so uh, at uh, City Hall, we're trying to uh, eliminate a gender gap and we're working with 15 uh, corporations and they themselves are working uh, to eliminate a gender gap. And related to uh, work, one more thing. Why is that uh, people do not come back uh, in their 20s? Uh, we have analyzed as follows. Uh, rural area, uh, there is a strong impression that uh, rural area is uh, poor and boring. So that is why once they go out uh, to uh, major cities, uh, they don't come back. Yes, indeed, we have income disparities, etc. But uh, not only that, uh, we don't have culture, art. It's boring. Uh, no fashionable stores uh, or any high streets. Uh, not so, we don't have a sophisticated um, arts and uh, museum. Uh, Paul McCartney skipped our city, uh, and we don't have a KB48. Uh, so job, of course, employment uh, is uh, necessary. Uh, but uh, another thing is we have to create value uh, so that uh, people can enjoy as they uh, send their lives uh, in Toyooka City. Uh, so. Uh, especially uh, for female workers. Uh, they have, for female, uh, we have gender gap. Uh, the job to application uh, is 1.84. Uh, so we do have job. Uh, there's a lot of job offerings. Uh, it's a matter of, uh, is it uh, worthwhile to work uh, in uh, Toyoka? And are they attractive uh, job? Maybe a, the income level uh, is lower or salary is lower than uh, the jobs you find uh, in central metropolitan area. But uh, if you're confident uh, and uh, if you like uh, the job and if you uh, are appealed uh, to the job, I'm sure people will come back. And uh, even if we have been um, making uh, Toyoka City attractive, I don't think uh, we have done a good job uh, in conveying the fact. Uh, so regarding a gender gap at a workplace, Toyoka City has a work uh, innovation uh, strategy. So do you have any comments about your strategy? So for private sector, that's including uh, City Hall, uh, but um, reform uh, at the workplace uh, is called a work innovation uh, strategy. So of course, uh, City Hall is one place uh, to work for. Uh, so uh, we are trying to eliminate gender gap uh, by uh, creating a career path. It's quite new, so we have not achieved uh, any results, uh, but 
Oh, now uh, we are um, exposing uh, people to this word uh, gender gap and uh, try to um, make a gender uh, gap free a, a common sense. And uh, we're also having uh, male uh, workers at City Hall uh, take a child care leave. Uh, and it, of course, it's not an obligation yet, uh, but uh, the other day we had this uh, meeting uh, of discussing about a male uh, child care leave. Uh, and uh, we e made a point. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, will kick in uh, from April, uh, and uh, the mayor uh, is uh, to uh, submit uh, the e beginning of the year uh, communique, and of course uh, the mayor uh, will um, convince uh, the male workers uh, to take uh, child care leave as well. So next I'd like to uh, ask Sato-san. So uh, you're from Takamatsu City. Uh, but you decided to go to uh, Niigata, and furthermore, uh, you're now involved in farming, and uh, you're an entrepreneur in the farming uh, industry. So, uh, can you explain to us uh, the background? Well, already recently, I have been working in, or wanting to work uh, as uh, saving the refugees. I was studying in order to settle conflict. I have been to Africa many a time. Was a student uh, here in Tokyo. But uh, I participate as a volunteer uh, in order to uh, help out the disaster-stricken area of the earthquake. And there was a small support of six houses, and there has been designated to the fact that all the people living there is a very marginal location, and they wanted to continue, and they wanted to uh, revitalize a lot of marginalized uh, villages outside of Tokyo. So the farmers uh, were the verge of being struck by the earthquake, but they wanted to revive back, back, revive back once again, back again. So uh, in terms of creating people uh, happiness and thinking about people happiness, and at the corner of the Japan nation, they are suffering from losing population, depopulate, depopulate population, but I thought that I would be able to contribute some in order to uh, help out these communities. So I wanted to establish and attain the ideal, and I decided to start farming, and there were many things that I've been taught. And it is not tangible. You can see how you can really grow, or you can nurture and grow. And at the time of this transformation, I thought that is such a treasure to me. And I wanted to connect this dots, meaning that these farming that are created uh, could be linked together. So after graduating from university, I decided to obtain work and start my company there. But with that being said, uh, in terms of the region needs to be sustainable, I have hit a big wall there because uh, I had to bear a child and I have to nurture my child. The reason is because uh, in terms of residence and also child rearing and working, uh, I wanted to connect those uh, pieces together in the suburban area. But it was something that uh, was still apart from each of the uh, distances. And uh, this, of course, the mingling of these areas, uh, people and work have been migrated to the suburban area, and uh, all these uh, life and work and child rearing has been in the past, it was to mingle together, but that was segregated. So I thought that I would not be able to continue to do all my work then. But in terms of the economy as uh, farming and lifestyles, or it's something that is related to culture, how can you fuse this uh, two together uh, in order to revisit the new value? And that is how I am leading uh, and also operating my farm. So based on your own experience, you're hoping that, uh, or foreseeing that the culture of, or the culture uh, of, or the uh, environment is changing. And then maybe young people and women will come back to these regions and they may be able to gain occupation as a farmer and they may have a new breakthrough. So what is needed in order to actually this to happen, the positive cycle to spur? I think two things. One is that to deepen your own self and also the environment need to be deepened so so, so multifaceted perspective so deepening yourself is i was when a uh, kindergarten 
child, I have been asked what you want to be when you grow up. And I always have were able to give a name that are well known. And that was the only option I had. But in fact, that is not the case. You can generate something new or grow something new but I never had that opportunity that that could be an occupation so in the educational system today regarding work how would you like to live how would you like to pursue your life never I had a chance to think all those elements together in detail but in terms of living here today and uh, the young people is girls uh, in their uh, early uh, years. In other words, there's a comprehensive way of thinking about uh, child rearing and working. Not only work 100%, uh, so it's a, a balance. So then who are you, what you want to do? Uh, you need to be able to have a place to deepen yourself. Without these places to reflect upon yourself, there is no exit. So you cannot generate your own options, which is really hard to do. So. I know I have to come to unwind the uh, rational behind it, but still I have not been able to put that into positive action. You mentioned about deepening the dimensions. So at the same time, the nails that sticks out is always being banged, especially in the suburban regional areas. So you are outsiders, you're women, you're alien. You need somebody, uh, maybe a government or maybe somebody in the region who will support you. I don't know whose role it will be. But just having that person there, uh, you can really feel at ease or change. Otherwise, you will be... Uh, for suffering from setbacks. I think most women are suffering from these setbacks. And the other is, as I said, latter part of uh, ten teens and also early part of 20s, they're now on their toes to do something. Then of course, the transportation cost is quite difficult. But if there's something that would really push them on their shoulders, which would broaden their mindset, and you can deepen the way one lives. So that is my feeling. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, I would like to ask uh, Graham, Miss Graham. So in the future of work, so this thing, I think is the context of SDGs and this W20, the women's eco economic, of course, empowerment. I think this is very significant theme. And that is uh, the very theme of this uh, panel. But Ms. Graham, in terms of digital economy, uh, which is going to be accelerated in the coming years, how this digital technologies uh, for women can embrace and learn and utilize. So that, I think, is going to be a very important aspect of women economic empowerment. So that is a common set of understanding on a global basis. So with that being said, I would like to indeed in the regional area, not only employment, but in terms of starting up a company. There are a lot of different opportunities available. So within that, the women in uh, employment or starting up a company in the suburban rural area, how can technology can contribute for these women? Uh, please just share your insights. Yes. Um so when I think about job creation in rural areas, I think the key, obviously we're a technology company and so we firmly believe that technology is one of the key pillars for that and getting those technical skills into the people's hands and meeting them where they are. So being in the rural areas. If I could ask for the slides once again to show you just briefly a quick um, map of where we have our empowered women programs and our innovation centers and other projects. You can see it's really not based in Tokyo, but spread throughout Japan. And that really is the key, is meeting people where they are and providing programs. And specifically, I'll just take our empowered women program as an example, um, providing skills, technical skills more specifically, to women in these rural communities. A key pillar of that, though, is uh, it has to be this public-private partnership, both between local governments, private corporations, and NGOs or nonprofits. And so having those three elements work together to help create this base of, uh, or sort of lift the base of the technical skills in these regions is absolutely vital. I think um, 
We, we also need to think about um, how we can uh, promote, and, and it's not just about giving skills to women, it's also changing the work style and the culture. I think we mentioned in, in um, many areas in this morning's keynote also, where it's not just about women developing skills or people developing new skills, technical skills, but it is also about changing the work environment and having, and that's part of what why that three-part or tripartite um, relationship is so critical because at the same time we're changing corporations and how they think about work and what is the meaning of work and how can we have a flexible work style that accommodates a diverse range of capabilities and work styles and, and needs. And so to me that is the absolute critical part of making a successful effort in training people and making it uh, sort of stick, as we say. I just want to point out super quickly, again, to emphasize, it's not, for us, it's not based in Tokyo. It is about meeting people where they are. And um, so we'll see in May, we're kicking off a new Empowered Women program in Okazaki City in Aichi Ooh. Prefecture and in Saga City in Saga Prefecture. We also have programs, as you can see on the map, um, in Nagarayama City in Chiba, Sapporo City in Hokkaido, and Sakata City in Yamagata. We're always looking for new partnerships and ways in which we can expand that even more. But I, the model for us is, as I just described, having those three parties together and meeting people where they are in rural areas. Well, thank you very much. What's necessary for women's empowerment is economic, of course, sustainability as well. But digital empowerment is also another key word that is commonly used around the world. And I think its understanding has been deepened uh, for the significance of this very meaning. So once again, I would like to ask your, minister, your Excellency, your Minister, so now uh, your, of course, responsibilities uh, in terms of uh, the Minister of State or Regional Revitalization, what do you do? in terms of farming and in terms of the uh, proprietary uh, sort of work or independent work is very much promising for young and women employees. So the number of employees has dropped, but every four, uh, new uh, four years, there are new people accounting for 20,000 people going into farming. And uh, already 6,000 people are already into farming. で、我々は女性の農業者と企業がコラボレーションして、例えば有名なメーカーですけど、遺跡の機関というのがあって、女性が操作しやすい農業機器、あるいはあの有名な車のメーカーの、excuse me, excuse me. There has been the uh, kind of collaboration between the farming and the equipment manufacturers and farmers. So the I talked about the uh, 3 million, but the, when they go get into the farming, the the, we provide 1.5 million yen, which is a support money, and then the uh, loan has been provi provided to them. The situation here is much better than before. The most important is income, income level. The, I went to Kochi Prefecture, which is one of the four uh, the prefectures in Shigoku Island. And they are suffering from the sparse, uh, the, the pop the sparse population, and then they have the IOP, Internet operated plant. So, the so their hectare, the revenue is sixty thousand dollars. This is just the horticultural product, and if it is the sixty thousand dollars, then there is no outflow of young people. They re, they choose to remain in the farming field. And so the mothers also started working hard. They we have the in the uh, local assembly. Not too many people want to assume the office of the local assembly. So even if they uh, the, uh, the there is no competition, uh, they do not become the uh, local assembly members, but in the case of the uh, very small village with the population of uh, 1,000, uh, they, if we uh, entrust them to do things by themselves, this is the outsourcing situation, and uh, we have about 1,000 of them, and they, they the female, the villagers want to uh, 
have easier time getting into this field. So that means that they are able to volunteer. I think it is important to be creative to make sure that people are able to get into this kind of structures. So the stakeholders should be, the stakeholder jobs should be taken by females so young people would be able to remain and they, they stay there. And then if it, they, that means that they, they, they're around 50 and they are very much experienced and that means that we are able to tap into their capabilities based on their experiences. Then about teleworking, the uh, unconscious bias is not uh, the it's not too much shown in the overseas market. Uh, Japanese uh, housewives they uh, started not noticing that it is important to have the teleworking. The non-Japanese companies were first to notice. That means that the uh, the females uh, would want to work uh, as much as possible uh, when they want to uh, to do, and when they are able to have the uh, good balance between their, la their life and the work. So we are able to see the increase of the female workers. Not too many. Uh, the uh, girls with the good scores, good grades in the uh, the science and the mathematics are now not uh, are taking up their jobs. But now we are able to see the change. Then, the uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. You talked about the very good point. We have the hundred, the forty nine, the uh, the cities and the municipalities and others. They are went to Sakaya City, Sabaya City in Fukui Prefecture. The, for the, the they they introduce JK JK city city hall JK is Japanese the high school the female students and they were invited into the city hall the city government so they were able to understand how they are able to work in the city hall or city government so that means that female the workers females would go out of the prefecture and then they could come back so Sabaya is a city uh, where they were able to uh, come back so that means that they, uh, this is a message to all these people uh, who would come back to uh, Sabaya City after they, they studied outside of this prefecture. This was quite natural, and they have already started this kind of activity. And so we have the uh, the social withdrawal is issue, and we uh, we are thinking of incorporating that into the thick bone policy in Japan. We have as many as one million people who are socially withdrawn, and most of them are in local areas. So they are the living uh, out of their the pension uh, pension benefit of their the fathers fathers are in the 80s and the 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 people withdrawn are in their 50s and about 20 percent of them are able to use, use the personal computers so there are some companies who start that they tapping onto this the, the untapped skills so we try to be in line with their feelings and in line with the, how they are looking at things so we are able to see the successes here and then uh, we are able to show that the, the success experiences to the rest of the world uh, we have to try to work on the various things without sanctuary so we were able to listen to a very good input thank you so much we'll continue working on this so it's the, the essence of the SDGs would be very important as was mentioned we have to uh, to change the way we think the chain it changed the way we, we do things so innovation is the core and we have to work on the uh, this of the uh, certain things we do and then uh, we are able to uh, create a win win and win structure and so uh, the, you just shared with us some of the cases then we'd like to move into the next point in order for we females to, uh, to uh, women to live in the community in the easier manner what kind of uh, community should we establish uh, shoji san would i like you to make a comment so in the case of local commissioners they are very much deep rooted in the local community and so the, for these, the local commissioners, or uh, Minsei Ying, and also the the commissioners responsible for the uh, children, uh, what are some of the problems that have been faced by many of the people in the community? Could you tell us a bit about their difficulties and hardships? The the, the reason why the, the local commissioners are serving as the, uh, the children's uh, the commissioner is that they also the, uh, need to uh, receive services. Uh, the, in Japan, the, the, there is an increasing the problem of the child abuse. 
uh, the child poverty or child abuse are not the, uh, necessarily the problem of themselves alone, but rather we have to look at the entire family as in, in, in perspective. It is important to pay attention to all these people and the nece to provide necessary support for them. And that means that the, the female that means that the uh, local commissioners the, and also uh, child for the uh, commissioners are responsible for that. In their activities, the, uh, for the, the uh, people who are residing, living alone, or the elderly people, the, uh, the, we tend to focus uh, much on the females. But sometimes the female work, the female, the, uh, the local commissioners have difficulty uh, the dealing with the uh, dealing with the older men or uh, the, the men living alone sometimes it, de it depends on the situation but uh, according to the, uh, the in some cities it is difficult to do that so I think it is important to create a society in which people would be able to, uh, to exercise their full strengths in providing support and then the as to the roles played by the females, about 60% of the uh, local, uh, local community, the commissioners are females. So they are trying to uh, provide their contribution uh, in the community. And that's the reason why they have taken up their job as the MECAing or the uh, commissioner. So this is not only meant for the uh, meant for the support for the elderly people, but also they are providing support for the, the, uh, the mothers. And depending on the situation, the, they are the, uh, providing other things as well. For example, providing support for the, uh, the children when they uh, commute to school. And so uh, in that situation, it is important to be uh, unique in that they are able to reflect on their own profile of females. Thank you very much. The, I have been uh, working on the, uh, the, the PDA activities with others in the local community. And the, when I say the Minister in or the, uh, the social welfare workers or so local commissioners, uh, they tend to be uh, very much responsible for the uh, local community. In many ways, they are very active. And uh, this is the age where the era in which people are able to live 100 years or more. So in that situation, it is important to focus more on the local the, uh, the, their relationship with the local community. And also, the, it is important for them to learn from their activities about the child abuse, the situation the uh, at this moment is very much taken care of by the uh, welfare the social welfare workers or welfare commissioners about the uh, child abuse the and uh, the child abuse issue and the, the child the poverty this is not necessarily the uh, issue of the children alone but but rather this is the issue of the adults the, the mem family members or the other people who are living around them so what are some of the problems which are serving as a basis for that so child abuse and DV are highly related. Uh, so parents would fight and quarrel, or a husband acting uh, violent, violently uh, to wife, uh, and then uh, mentally uh, this uh, will harm uh, children. And uh, it's not visible outside, so which means that there are things uh, that uh, uh, people in the local community can do. Uh, for instance, uh, paying attention uh, to this uh, violent act and informing the local authority, or maybe a talk uh, to the wives. Uh, I am wearing this badge, and this orange uh, ribbon uh, stands for child abuse prevention. And in November, uh, it's uh, a month to prevent child abuse. And of course, uh, Ms. Katayama uh, is uh, wearing this badge as well. Uh, so nation as a whole, uh, of course, uh, we are working against uh, child abuse. And actually at our national council, uh, we have handmade uh, this uh, badge. Each and every one of them are actually wearing this badge. So if you're asked, uh, please 
uh, let people know that uh, this uh, stands for prevention and eradication of child abuse. Uh, so uh, you mentioned about uh, in the background is a domestic violence issue and uh, SDGs, uh, violent towards uh, female uh, eradication uh, is uh, one of important goals. And W20 communique that was delivered to Mr. Abe this morning uh, within the community, in the public and at home uh, violence uh, must be eradicated, and that was included in the communique. Thank you very much. So now, Santo-san, uh, very briefly, uh, due to co time constraints, uh, if you could be brief, uh, as we have been talking about uh, the depopulation uh, in rural area, uh, so young people, especially female, are working uh, in the urban area, and According uh, to one of the research institute, uh, easy to live uh, and uh, demonstrating, uh, being able to demonstrate these skills. Uh, so, uh, female Japanese female are not only going to uh, the metropolitan area of Japan, but they are going outside of Japan uh, to seek uh, these kind of environment, and they don't come back. And of course, uh, this is uh, one uh, of the major uh, issue that uh, rural area face. So, uh, what are specific difficulties uh, in uh, women uh, working or living in rural area? Yes, uh, there are a lot of options and choices uh, and it is being diversified. However, in rural area, uh, diversity is not uh, embraced. Uh, with a Toyota Foundation's help this year, uh, I am, uh, we, are, we have created a white paper uh, in uh, a life with a farm. Uh, and uh, how uh, these uh, mothers uh, worked uh, in uh, farming villages uh, as they raised their children is written in, in the white paper. And uh, the important thing that came up uh, was uh, it was difficult to gain identity and keep identity. So um, if um, you could manage a farm uh, with a high growth rate uh, and longer uh, acreage, that may be fine uh, for a male, but uh, that is not the mindset of uh, female workers or female farmers. Uh, they look at uh, their business uh, in a long term, like 30 years, uh, and uh, they are uh, willing uh, to, of course, uh, do their uh, business, uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, they seek the balance uh, between their work uh, and uh, their uh, home uh, that is raising uh, children. So these uh, women uh, had a difficulty in gaining identity. Uh, some uh, were not understood uh, by a people around them. Uh, so sometimes um, you go back to you go to uh, work for a farm uh, where your husband's uh, parents are managing and operating uh, the farm, uh, so you're invited uh, as an it to the by the in-laws, and uh, sometimes uh, you feel awkward, uh, you feel uh, out of place, uh, and uh, you feel the awkwardness uh, in uh, what you are doing, and. Uh, you, these uh, people are willing uh, to step forward. However, they are reluctant to do so because of, for instance, uh, childbearing uh, ears. Uh, so we talked about uh, domestic violence and also there are uh, diversity and choices uh, in farming uh, in rural area. However, uh, they are sometimes uh, stuck uh, in their position. So Katayama-san, please. Uh, lately, with uh, W20, uh, because of hosting W20, uh, we have been awarding uh, the advancement uh, of women uh, into the society. Uh, but for instance, uh, men, 
Uh, actually, uh, there are some uh, companies uh, worth like 200, and some companies uh, are forcing all male uh, workers uh, to take uh, child care leave. And now uh, the acquisition rate is like 5% right now. Oh. And uh, one of a uh, life insurance uh, company, e, e, Daiichi Life, uh, uh, has uh, decided to uh, have their male worker take childcare leave in a mandatory basis. And of course, uh, sometimes uh, the days are uh, short in some cases. And also some companies are saying that uh, instead of childcare leave, it should be a child uh, parental uh, care leave as well. So in any case, uh, we need to eliminate unconscious bias, uh, the role to be played uh, in the houseworks. And you also mentioned about uh, domestic violence. And there were a fortunate uh, case this year. On 19th of March, uh, Abe uh, administration had announced uh, a measure. And for the first time, embarrassingly, a violence towards spouses uh, to be eradicated. So that's anti-DV and also uh, Ministry of he Health and Welfare, uh, the e child abuse uh, prevention. Uh, these uh, two are now um, working together in sync. Uh, so uh, we tend to categorize uh, the work uh, very rigidly. And uh, it's not with ill intent, uh, but it's difficult to, to do away with this uh, existing scheme. And also, once you get the vested interest, uh, it is uh, difficult to uh, give up. Uh, and of course, uh, the same applies uh, to uh, male um, startups as well. And yesterday, uh, Abe-san was talking uh, to you and High Commissioner for Human Rights yesterday uh, about uh, this uh, issue. So a oh, similar issue uh, is being seen uh, in Japan as well. Uh, so without ill intent, uh, we tend to be complacent. Uh, but uh, in the changing world, uh, we will be left behind. We have to catch up, so which means that we have to be nimble and flexible. So in order to do that, uh, the government uh, is taking action. But if we force this, uh, that should not be the case. Uh, we want uh, the rural areas and regional areas to voluntarily uh, develop uh, with self-support. Uh, and uh, of course, when um, the students get together uh, with um, schools, uh, culture uh, is generated. And uh, we e need to have uh, these rural cities uh, take uh, their initiatives as well so that they will be able to retain uh, uh, women. Uh, yes, uh, at a national level, of course, uh, actions are being taken. So it is quite encouraging. Uh, so now, uh, Last point is about community leadership, uh, Nakagai-san, uh, gender uh, gap. And uh, you are uh, using uh, this uh, word uh, to sprinkle over er everyone. And in order to eliminate this uh, gender gap, uh, you are already taking uh, measures. Uh, so you are demonstrating a great uh, leadership. So the regional um, community that uh, women uh, are more eager to uh, work. Uh, what can uh, the leadership do, especially male uh, leaders? Uh, what, they, what can they do uh, from your example? Well, first of all, I think we need to host a high goal and to various people and I need to link up with the various institution. And the, the newborn babies had to be protected. So Toyoka, uh, is trying to seek or a small global. Well, small is not the right translation, local, uh, deep global city. So it could be some local, but still we could be proud of being local. So uh, di large Tokyo and metropolis uh, is uh, sound to be superior than the local small villages. And it seems as though there are hierarchy, a very strict hierarchy from which is better over what. So that I think is a backdrop uh, of how we are binded by this old stereotype of thinking. So we need to break this through. So by breaking it through, we would like to generate new energy. So not looking at the world 
as global. It's multi-local. It's a conglomerate of multi-local. And based on tradition, and based on the background, and the scenery, everything uh, is uh, starting from local. We can respect each locality. That will leave diversity to Japan. That will lead like diversity the world, and that would be more enriching. But that is about to be squeezed. So we need to take actions for that. So the set of value which I mentioned, if we are to pursue inclusive uh, of uh, of course, women as well. Uh, we need to be diverse. If we could be tolerant to diversity, that is one reason why we be able to really shine as a local community. So, Toyooka City, uh, we are now having a crane that has uh, come, become extinct. And once again, we have uh, decided to incubate the the egg for uh, the crane. And we have now started to revive. And United States, Hong Kong. Uh, Dubai, uh, the uh, Elcher Premium Hotel. Uh, the again, I think we our farm-grown goods are eaten by the Australian Embassy here in Japan. So Toyoka uh, is utilizing the old inherited land and growing rice paddies and rice, and we're connecting that to the international world. And young people are participating in this chain. Well, women are participating in this chain. So it's really it's a way of creating the local small community to be global and Kinosaki International Arts Center has been created so performing arts could stay over as a residence uh, for three months and they would be able to take part in farming and many uh, prominent of course people are coming and the famous uh, Japanese performer is decided to come to Toyoka and his of course theater is going to come to Toyoka permanently so it's a national university uh, if we can get approval from the MEX Ministry of Education we'll be able to Establish this new university with the artistic perspective and the locality. So uh, it's where artists can live and crane can live. And the third is a, a city is good for women to live. So this is the three strategy we have. So the city hall civil servant, they could be very capable, but there are limitations. It's important that we get ourselves linked together and concatenate our effort. Of course, the concatenation and bridging, bridging is empathy. Do we have the same empathy in attaining the same goal? That, I think, would infuse the power. Uh, gender gap, uh, in terms of something that has been really embedded in our fabric, and in terms of the old stereotype thinking. So we really need to change. So some of the city workers that are doing at best, and some of the intentional uh, future-looking enter enterprises are uh, about to be squashed out. So we need to always communicate as a, a local government to seek them, promote them, and in front of the public, we need to praise them so that they will be energized. So by doing so, this movement or these activities uh, would create a big whirlpool. And that, I think, is needed as to be the leader of this initiative. Well, thank you very much. Vision and action. Thank you very much. That's important. So, Ms. Graham, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, of course, a women leader in a big private, pub, private enterprise. Uh, so, in terms of organization, the regions, the regional government in Japan, we don't see a lot of women leaders. Uh, they're not really in the position to be empowered to make a decision. But to seek more women leaders, as an organization or regional community, how would they be revitalized, do you think? So, women leadership, can you allude to some of the insight uh, reflective of these areas, please? Sure. Um, I, if I understand the question correctly, it's essentially about why do we need women leaders, uh, especially in, well, in leadership positions, and why is that important, and how can that help revitalize local economies? And I guess we could spend all day on that topic, quite frankly, but let me just share with you two points that I think are, are important. One is just sort of why, women, why we need more women leaders is a principle of fairness. So when you have a democracy like Japan and you have more than 50% of your population is underrepresented, represented, uh, then it's simply just not fair. And um, taking that fairness then and translating it to economic value, you can think about it in terms of, in the long run, the more members of a diverse society that are able to enjoy that diversity, and then they see the benefits of that diversity, and investing in a shared prosperity, so the whole population sharing in the prosperity, 
and a common good that creates a more secure and a resilient society. A secure and resilient society is absolutely foundational for vibrant business. You cannot have a good economy and a good business when half of your population is not participating. I think the other point that I wanted to share and what I think is vital is, um, you know, we, we've heard a lot about how diversity leads to innovation. And, um, you know, essentially the, the notion is that new perspectives and innovation result when a group is diverse that different kinds of people come up with different kinds of ideas, and the more variety, the better. And so the, the whole notion is that you can't expect to have solutions to problems when you have a one-dimensional group or a homogeneous group that is looking at those solutions to a problem. So having that diversity is absolutely uh, foundational also to a healthy society. I guess the last point is the one that I think you were hinting at, which is role models. And I think that is absolutely vital and important and having good role models for uh, both men and women uh, to see what it is to be a woman leader in Japan and to um, sort of take the leap and put yourself out there is, is absolutely uh, a responsibility I think that every woman leader in Japan has. You mentioned about the fairness, yes, and then the various, of course, economic, of course, foundation, the very platform, the striving economy, of course, uh, is going to be changed with a lot of uh, women leadership representing a robust uh, society. So now we have exceeded the time slightly, but uh, since we have uh, started slightly uh, uh, Short, so after the hour, I would like to get a few words uh, from uh, Sato-san. Uh, Ms. Sato, please. Yes. As a woman, I think is many of them links up their vocational work with their lives. So with that being said, city like Tokyo, so there's a lot of working place. You need to give everything to earn money but at the same time farming uh, it is really is extension of your life that leads to farming and also come back to child dairy so from the olden times when listening to the stories of the local people so living and also nurturing children will generate new set of value so in the possibility for women to shine in the local suburban area that I think could also be uh, evolved or could be realized by women activity in the rural area. So how in terms of the work for monetization means and work for how you can fuse your livelihood and child rearing and still you can earn your bread is kind of a social experiment. So if you can overcome this as a region, I think the value will go up and also the women's satisfaction will go up as well. So I would like to make that challenge. Yes, that's uh, what I'm trying to do. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Shoji, please. Well, as I've been said already, a company, there are child abuse issue, which is quite severe year after year. Unfortunately, we're seeing an increase of child abuse. The other day in Chiba Free Sector, I know the city, uh, there was a death incident uh, of a girl, and it has been covered by the media almost every day. And the state and the the, the government is uh, very serious in tackling this issue. They're revising the anti-child abuse abuse law and the parents uh, would be prohibited from uh, penalizing their children uh, physically. So they are trying to enhance their legal framework in order to avoid these things from happening. So as for my role as social welfare and child welfare volunteer, this situation, we have a grievance on the current situation. Children are the treasure for the future. So the society as a whole needs to nurture these children. And as being appointed a person responsibility of social welfare and child welfare, we hope that we need to pursue society building with those awarenesses in mind. That will be all. Thank you. Well, 
the SDGs is in fact achieving the 2030 goals of how we discern the future of our lives, uh, which is really such should be the environment for the young people or the children that are to live the future years. And the parents and we adults have to make sure that these goals are being met. So uh, the minister. Ms. Minister uh, Katayama, so listening to the discussion so far, what is your thinking? Uh, can you summarize this panel, please? Well, I think it's a wonderful uh, panelist with the, their diverse experiences, uh, listening to the comment from people around the world. I'm very uh, proud that we can have this in a very international arena. And in Japan, some of the things that needs to be discussed are all submitted on the table. So we, Japan, in strongly believing SDGs and trying to pursue and attaining the goals is because we uh, are at the forefront of looking at the dropping of birth rate, having a certain level of technological capability. We have overcome in somewhat the environmental issues. And again, we have been exposed to various uh, severe natural disaster. And we have stood up from these natural disasters. And that may be the reason why, with the aging society as well, uh, I think all that has been discussed is very promising. So sustainable, of course, for the sustainability sake, Japan need to start from the bottom-up approach, starting from the regions and the rural areas, and do everything that we can do. Global and locals are fusing to become global. We are all connected around the world. And this, of course, connection is also something that we put a lot of emphasis in. So in terms of the longevity of our lifespan, but meaning that it's a longevity of experience as well. Humankind's to live as humans in an enriching manner. How for the region, for the society, for the universal health care, are we needed in solving these issues? And in the human society, there are some harassment that tends to happen. So we need to also could have shed light in terms of this discussion today. Harassment, we have do not have a criminal law against harassment overall, but criminal law. All the harassment so far, which is uh, have been uh, a very, very deep, has been penalized. So Sweden and Norway, Scandinavian uh, representative delegates from the ministry, they have said that family harassment does exist. So father and children, mother to children, and both relationships have to be in good relationship. And the third is that a father and mother needs to love, of course, or at last should be in good relationship. Otherwise, for children, it's not a sustainable environment. So, in order to realize this, uh, it is important to intervene at an early stage. They can provide consulting services. If there is a problem, there could be some rehabilitation, in the, for example, based on the intervention uh, with the mental health. Uh, we are not sure whether it is possible to do that, but the, we try to uh, come up with the uh, social solution so that the entire situation will be boosted. That's what SDGs are all about. So uh, we uh, learn from the uh, today's session and we do understand that there are many things we still can do and from the uh, the audience we might want to please send us an email to the cabinet office you learned from your the, the this experience at this the panel discussion and to try to give us a feedback thank you thank you very much uh, mr katayama you talked about the revitalization of the local uh, community and you are now coming up with, with the uh, the measures for the next generation the uh, for we talked about the gender 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 equality and gender the enhancement so i sincerely would like you to come up with the policies with the reflection on this issue and uh, establish a platform in many municipalities as the, as you just mentioned. With this, I'd like to close this panel discussion. Uh, I'd like to express my sincerest appreciation to the, the panel members, including the, the Ms. Katayama. Thank you so much. I'd like to uh, say thank you to the coordinator. Thank you very much. Again, please give the panel members a big round of applause. Thank you very much.
you talked about the uh, various uh, cases. Uh, thank you very much for sharing with us uh, about some of the cases in the forefront. So I uh, would like to pin high hopes on your activities in the future.